Okay, this is the chemical reactions lab for IS-1. We'll be doing just a selection of the steps um, in the test tubes, and you can follow along to make your observations. We'll be starting with step 2, which is on page, set, uh, page labeled 73. So, uh, now we'll start with the first part of step 2, where we're going to take sulfuric acid and combine it with calcium carbonate. So this is the sulfuric acid. We're going to go ahead and add some of that to a test tube. It says about two to three mils. Okay, so there is our sulfuric acid. I'm just going to put these in order from left to right for all of the reactions. So this will be the first one and then so on as we go across the way. And then the next part is we're going to add our calcium carbonate, which is in this little plastic vial here. Let that focus in on there real quick. So there is our calcium carbonate. I'm going to add a small amount, about pea-sized amount, to the sulfuric acid in the test tube. I'm going to bring it a little closer to the camera so you can see what's going on and you can be able to make accurate observations. I'm going to stir it up a little bit, get that solid down there, it's kind of stuck. You might even actually be able to hear it. All right, I'm going to put that right back there. So that is the sulfuric acid and calcium carbonate. This would be the part where you record your observations of everything you saw from when they were mixed together. <clears throat> I'm going to wait about 10 seconds, and then I'm going to do the burning wooden splint test. Okay, it's been about, actually it's probably been about a minute, but we'll go ahead and do our burning splint test. And there you go, there's your burning splint test. You can see hopefully what happened and you can make your observations from there. All right, ready for the next reaction of step two, which is the acetic acid and the calcium carbonate. So, I'll go ahead and grab the acetic acid, which is here. Acetic acid, or otherwise known as household vinegar. Household vinegar is actually 5%, this is 10%, so it's a little stronger, but still going to do what we needed to do. So, I'm going to take some and put in the test tube. Okay, that's the acetic acid. I'm going to go ahead and add a very small size sample of calcium carbonate. So again, our calcium carbonate going in the test tube. I'll bring that a little bit closer so you can see what's going on. shake. Okay, I'm going to let that sit for a second and then do the burning splint test. Okay, time for the burning splint test. I moved it over a little bit because that bar, blue bar was in the way so that you can see a little bit better of what's going on. And it's actually bubbling up pretty good so I'm going to give it a second to calm down before I do the burning splint test. All right, we go. Burning splint. 
All right. There you go. Burning Splint Test. All right, moving on to step three, uh, the hydrochloric acid and zinc, which is the first part of step three. So here is our test tube, and here is our hydrochloric acid. All right. I'm going to move the acetic acid and calcium carbonate over a little bit now that we're kind of done with it. And now for our zinc. I'm probably going to take a couple chunks of it in. Okay, bring that a little bit closer to the camera so you can get a closer look. Okay, I'm going to put that right back in the test tube rack and let it sit there for a bit. Okay, so the zinc and the hydrochloric acid has been sitting for a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and do the burning splint test and see what happens. All right. I don't know if you could hear it, but it kind of made a small little popping noise. It was really, really soft. Okay, now for the next part, we're going to take acetic acid, which I've already put into this test tube right here, and we're going to add some zinc to it, and then basically do the exact same experiment. All right, so I'm going to add some chunks, and then after I've added the chunks, I'll, I'll show you what the, what's happening inside the test tube. Okay, so here we go with the acetic acid and the zinc. Now that you see what's happening, I just added them, and you can see the reaction taking place, and make some observations. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and put this in the rack, let it sit there for a bit, and come back and do the burning splint test. Okay, so the acetic acid and zinc have been going for a little bit here, uh, probably actually about almost a minute, and I'm going to go ahead and do the uh, burning splint test here. So I'll take our splint, and here we go. Okay, again, I don't know if you could hear it, it's really, really quiet. There's just a very loud, uh, very soft pop sound. Almost like a poof. Okay, so over here we have our silver nitrate. So this is moving on to step four. It says fill the test tube halfway with 0.1 molar silver nitrate solution. I filled a little bit more than halfway, but you know, it's fine. The more the merrier. And so that's our silver nitrate solution in this test tube right here. I'm gonna move this one over. And so what I'm gonna do now is take our copper wire and put it in there. So copper wire, make a little hook. And there you go. I'm going to move it over to right there, and we're going to let it sit for 15 minutes. You can go ahead and make your initial observations based on what you see, and then we'll come back and make observations as we go along. Okay, now it's time for step five. First one is chlorine water, or aqueous chlorine, that we're going to mix with. Um, we're making a slight change here. Instead of sodium iodide, we're going to be adding potassium iodide. So we're going to add that to the test tube that has chlorine water in it, and we're going to see what happens. I'm going to add some, and then I'm going to stir it. And stirring. Although the change is pretty, hopefully, pretty obvious. There you go. Okay, so now for the next part here for step five, we're going to be adding uh, 
this potassium iodide, again, we're switching out the sodium iodide for potassium iodide and adding that to bromine water, or aqueous bromine. This is the test tube with the aqueous bromine. I'm going to make your observations of just that, and then I'm going to go ahead and add <coughs> Ooh, potassium iodide to that. All right. There you go. Um, I'm going to stir, although it probably doesn't really need it. You can see there was a pretty obvious change there, I hope. There you go. And also you can notice over here in our silver nitrate solution and copper wire, any sort of changes are taking place. It's only been about five minutes, so we'll come back to it at the end after the 15. Okay, so now we're moving on to step seven. We are not doing step six. We'll be skipping that step. And so I have a test tube already set up with um, the silver nitrate in it, which is this test tube right here. And so what I'm going to do is to this test tube is add dropwise uh, some sodium chloride solution. All right, so let's see what happens here. So here's the sodium chloride solution. shake, although you can see that there's some pretty obvious things going on there. Bring that in a little bit closer for you to look at. Okay, so that is step seven, the part where you put the silver nitrate and the sodium chloride together. Just to recap, remember this is uh, the first one that we did, which was the hydrochloric acid and, oh no, I'm sorry, sulfuric acid and calcium carbonate. This is the acetic acid and calcium carbonate. This is the zinc and hydrochloric acid. This is the zinc in acetic acid. This is our copper wire and silver nitrate after about 10 minutes. Uh, chlorine water and potassium iodide. Bromine water and potassium iodide and silver nitrate and sodium chloride. Okay, so this is the last one that we'll be doing. Uh, this is the second part of step seven where you're gonna be adding sodium chromate to silver nitrate. So I have a test tube right here that already has silver nitrate in it, and I'm going to be adding to it in drops the sodium chromate. And we'll watch and see what happens. All right, and after that, we'll take a look at our copper wire and silver nitrate, because that will have been done after 15 minutes. Well, here comes the chromate. All right, there you go. Okay, so that is that one. I'll bring it in a little bit closer so you can get a closer look at it if you want. Okay, there you go. And let's come back to our silver nitrate and copper wire since now it's been 15 minutes. And so you can see, I'll bring it in a little bit closer for you to take a look at. Okay, there you go. That is all of your steps that you're responsible for. You are not responsible for step eight. You are not responsible for step six. And you are not responsible for step one. All right, so you should have observations of all of the reactions, and then you should be able to convert them into chemical formulas. All right. Bye-bye.